Let us pray. God, we ask your spirit to be with us, to pry open our hearts and minds so we can receive what you have to give to us today. In these scriptures, songs we sing, words that are said, help us to know your need for who we are, your desire for who we can become. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we read the list of those who have passed away since last All Saints Day. But I want you to think about how sometimes a list is not just a list. Because we preachers tend to avoid these lists in scripture. But today it's about lists. Fred Craddock, one of my favorite storytellers, has this list in Romans. And I might have used this before, and I will probably use this again because I love this story. Because sometimes calling the roll is not all bad. Fred talks about one December, he was summoned to the Superior Court at DeKalb County in Georgia to serve on a jury. On a Monday morning at 9 o'clock, 240 persons formed a pool out of which jurors for civil and criminal cases would be chosen. The deputy clerk of the Superior Court stood and called all 240 names. She didn't have them in alphabetical order, so you really had to listen and say present. There were two Bill Johnsons. One was black, one was white. They were both Bill Johnson. There was a man named Clark who answered when the clerk said, Mrs. Clark, and he stood up and said, here. She looked up and said, Mrs. Clark. He said, here, Mrs. He said, well, I thought the letter was for me and I opened it. The clerk said, we summoned Mrs. Clark. Well, I'm here, can I do it? She doesn't like this kind of thing. And the clerk said, Mr. Clark, how do you know she doesn't know she's been summoned because you opened her letter? This roll call was pretty good. There was a man whose name Fred wrote down phonetically because he couldn't spell it. His name was Zerfel Lichtenstein. He remembered it because they said it five or six times, mispronouncing it each time. And the man insisted that his name be pronounced correctly. And he finally stood in a huff and said, I see no reason why I should serve on a jury in a court that can't pronounce my name. The woman next to me, Fred said, whispered over to him, Lichtenstein, I wonder if he's a Jew. Fred said, well, I don't know, but does it matter? She said, I'm German. My name is Zeller. Fred said, it doesn't matter. That was 40 years ago. She said, he and I could be seated next to each other in the jury. Fred said, well, you probably were a child when all that happened years ago. She said, I was 10 years old. I visited my grandmother who lived four miles from Buckenwald. I smelled that smell. Fred makes a note of this passage from Romans writing, we might be interested in Paul's roll call and the makeup of the membership of the church. He says, but in the list, there's a husband and wife, Aquila and Priscilla. There's a man named Rufus and his mother. There's a brother, Nerus and his sister. There are brothers Andronicus and Junius. There are sisters, Tryphenia and Tryphosia. They're twins. There's an old man, a penitus. Isn't it an interesting profile of that early church? There's a single woman, Mary. There's a single man, Herodian. It is the family of Christ that has called them together. Fred says what Paul wrote in Romans 16 then isn't just a list. He's remembering people who were special to him. Aquila and Priscilla, they risk their necks for me. Andronicus and Junius, they were in jail together. They're great Christians. There's Mary. Mary worked hard. She was there when everybody else quit. She was the one who always said, Paul, you go home. I'll put things away. I'll put the hymnals up. I'll pick up the papers, straighten the chairs. You go home. You're tired. And Paul would say, well, Mary, you're tired too. But yes, Paul, you've got to ride a donkey across Asia tomorrow. You go on. I'll pick up. Mary worked hard. Repentance, the first person converted over by my preaching, he said, and I didn't sleep a wink that night 
I spent the whole night saying, thank God, finally somebody heard. How many people do you think he preached to before somebody heard? What a marvelous day that was. Tryphenia and Tryphosia, the twins, you hear it in those names? They always sat on the right. They both wore blue every Sunday. He said he never knew them apart, really. One of them had a mole on her cheek. But he said, I didn't know if it was Tryphenia or Tryphosia, so I could never get them straight. He said, say hello to Rufus. Tell his mother hello, because she's my mother too. Some women earned from the apostle the title mother. He probably stayed in their house. She must have been a rather large woman, always wore an apron with a lot of things stuffed inside the apron, the kind of woman who could say to him, now you sit down and eat your breakfast. I don't care if you're an apostle, you've got to eat. Sometimes a list is more than a list. I don't know about you, but I remember going to the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. The day I went, it was Father's Day. There were flowers at the base of the memorial. People were touching the stones, the names. People were rubbing paper across the names so they could carry the name back home with them. You see, you can't really call it a list because it's not just a list. It's more. In fact, those names in Romans 16 are extremely special to Paul. Because even though he says hello to them, what he's really saying is goodbye. He is going to Rome. Before he goes to Rome, he's going to Jerusalem. He's going to take the offering into a nest of hostility in Jerusalem. So at the end of chapter 15, he says to these people, pray with me, agonize with me that I won't be killed when I go to Jerusalem. That the saints will accept the money in Jerusalem that I'll get to come back and be with you. These are not just names. You can't call it just a list because it's more than a list. In this list we read today, members and friends of Trinity United Methodist Church who passed away since last All Saints Day is not just a list. Each name represents a person whose life has had a ripple effect on this world and the people of their lives and made it a little different because of who and how they were. Each church I've been a part of could have had its own list of saints living and dead. They will always be a part of me in, in Albion, where we lived till I was 13, Sunday school teachers, Mrs. Crosby, Mrs. Virginia White, who's a part of this congregation, Mrs. Levander. They survived our class of boys. Wouldn't let us meet in the church because we were too rowdy. We had to meet in the old parsonage out in the parking lot because we were too loud. I was a shy boy, if you believe that. Mrs. Levander, my childhood pastor, Andy Anderson, whose daughter is a part of this congregation. He's about four foot 11. So at 10 years old, I stood eye to eye with Andy huge into Camp Fontenelle, his whole ministry. At Donovan, Marlene Haskins, Joanne Adams, Duck Weiss, Myron and Marsha, Lawton Slager. At Fremont First, UMC, Bob and Michelle, Steve and Jana, and Mr. Ebers, a pillar of that congregation. At St. Andrew's Parish in Charleston, Jenny and Kay and Leon, Miriam Hunter, in Ainsworth and Johnstown, the Johnson Twins, one went to one church, one went to the other. We don't know why. Marilyn Williams, Mel and Sherry Campbell, at Seward, Rod and Ann, Jim and Cindy, Jack and Lynette, Jerry Faby, Missouri Senate Lutheran that I played basketball with at Concordia College at lunch. Nicest basketball group I've ever been a part of. If you threw the ball to them, they threw it back. And they said they were sorry when they fouled you. Most of them were pastors that taught at Concordia. At Beatrice, Bruce and Don, Gail and Blake, Brian, Jeff, Jake. You get the picture here. Saints are those people who give us a piece of their souls by just being who they are. And we take that gift and bring that part of them into ourselves. And the world is better, greater for this exchange. 
of soul power. When we were pastors at Seward and Beaver Crossing, there was this little kid, Kira, a girl amongst a family of boys. She and her family were active in all the stuff in the church. We served there from 1997 to 2002. That's how old I am. Now Kira's all grown up, a mother of two. Her grandmother recently passed away. And Kira's mom shared this piece that Kira wrote for her grandma. To me, it tells the story of how pieces of ourselves are passed on to the next generation. Listen to what Kira says. She says, Grandma Barb went home to Jesus this morning. I'm grateful she's no longer struggling, but it's heartbreaking to lose her. She says, I truly believe she's the reason I collect nativities. She had a nativity out all year long when I was growing up and collected them. I remember thinking when I had a home, I couldn't wait to do the same thing. Going to her morning coffee group with her as a child is the reason I crave cinnamon rolls when I smell cigarette smoke. She was not a smoker, but a lot of the ladies were. And so those two got connected. I got a cinnamon roll a lot of times when I went with her and all the smoke would come back to my nose. I remember her dancing in the kitchen when the old crooners came on. She loved Bing Crosby and Christmas just as much as I do. She's the reason I love Estes Park so much. She and Grandpa and my mom took Uncle Randy and every year. So her love of it passed on to Mama and then to me. We took several trips there together, just her and me and Mama, and we were always so fun, if not a little stressful because we all have very strong opinions, all riding in the same car. One of my favorite memories of those trips is when Grandma and I were waiting for Mama to grab something at Walmart, and I was just doing slow laps around the parking lot so we could pick her up at the front door, and Grandma suddenly says, are we trolling for men? I didn't even know she knew that phrase. She had this sneaky, fantastic sense of humor. One Christmas, she let Drew, Evan, and me fling forks at her and try and stick in her hair. And we laughed so hard. A few Christmases later, Evan and I did it again, and we asked her why she was letting us do it. And she says, I don't know, it's just because I'm stupid. She bought me my first big wheel tricycle. Most likely it was a planned purchase, but in my memory it was with her at the store, the general store, and I saw it on a high shelf and pointed to it, and the next thing I know, it was coming off the shelf and coming home with us. It was such a feeling of accomplishment when I was finally taller than her and stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with her, and she looked up at me and said, Oh, shut up. That was a rite of passage in our family. She said, I remember a time when we made caramel corn together, which we'd done many times before, but that time we forgot to bake it. And the laughs we had, we realized our mistake. She always melted into my hugs because I would rub her back, she would purr, and I would just smile because nothing beats grandma hugs. She always spoke her mind, including giving a group of teenagers at my brother's bowling tournament the condom talk and we don't know why. She instilled manners in the need to take pride in your appearance. She would say, dress like you're having dinner with the queen. Christmas will not be the same this year without her. She would always complain about how bratty the kids were in the Christmas story movie. Even as Evan and I would look at each other across the room and roll our eyes because she said the same thing every year as we watched that movie. I will miss you so much, Grandma. I'm so grateful for the time we had together and what a blessing it is. The last words we said to each other are, I love you. I hope you're dancing in the mountains in heaven. What a glorious view. I love that by Kira. And even though she's 30-something and has two kids, I still see her as the eight-year-old. I invite you today, in a few seconds, we're going to do like what the South Korean Methodist Church does when they do prayer time or they have people just all say their requests at the same time out loud. And it's just prayer chaos. I wanna invite you to say out loud the names of your saints, living and dead, 
who have made you a little different just for being around him. If you're online, type in the names into the comment section. So we all thank God today for the saints of our lives. On the count of three, say them out loud. One, two, three. Gil Cargas, Mary Cargas, Bill Cargas. We thank God today for all the saints of our lives and all they've passed on to us to make us who and what we are. We're here today because of the saints of our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.